So uh, welcome to the fourth lecture. We've been looking at verbs, particularly strong verbs, uh, last uh, week. And I wanted to continue that looking at weak verbs and combine that with looking at loan words because um, all weak verbs are derived from other verbs. So if you uh, want to introduce new um, words into German, you have to take an existing word and that can be the past tense of a strong verb, that can be an adjective, a noun, or it can be um, a foreign word from English or more usual in um, the Middle Ages from Latin or also for all the courtly vocab, you take uh, um, words from French and turn them into a new uh, German word. And if you compare uh, English vocabulary and German vocabulary, you'll see um, the part of loan words in English is much higher the proportion than in German because in um, English you have all the um, loan words derived from French. And uh, we have been looking at Hugo von Trimberg's account of the creation of the world and observed that that was mainly uh, told in strong verbs because it's uh, really basic actions that happen, actions that happened in the Bible um, were accounted in uh, Hebrew but could also be recounted in uh, Germanic languages with a basic vocabulary. And now he moves away and moves into a reflection of why he has actually been telling us this story. And why, uh, when he moves into this reflection time, you see uh, the picture becomes much more colorful. So we have marked in red the strong verbs, in uh, blue the weak verbs, and in green the modal verbs that are derived from the preterite present um, verb. So from the past tense of a strong verb, which has been turned into a modifier for verbs. So it, for nuanced storytelling, you need more than what the Indo-European roots um, offer to you. And uh, here, Hugo von Trimberg reflects on uh, why he doesn't go on to give a full uh, interpretation, a sermon, as you like, about uh, Genesis, because he says that's really the domain of priests and um, consecrated uh, people who are ordained to, to tell us the authoritative version. I won't tell you the authoritative version, I'll just tell you stories. And you have to learn from the moral of uh, the story rather than from a divinely inspired um, interpretation of scripture. So uh, the narrator says, Du rede wer mir zelenge, namely to explain everything of uh, the Genesis story in theological terms, und auch du Wort zestrenge, dass ich sie sollte brenge von Latin zu düte. So translation is the literally the translation process, the bringing across from one language, Latin, into the other language, Deutsch. And as we had discussed, Düte means both uh, the vernacular and the interpretation. So this uh, translation exercise should be done by Klosterlüte, Klosterleuten, those who live in monasteries and don't have um, to teach naughty school children, but have time to ruminate on scripture. Der sollen Klosterlüte pflegen und ander Pfaffen, die Gott dazu geschaffen hat, dass sie gut Bilde geben, uns leihen an Lehre und auch an Leben. So Hugo von Trimberg builds himself um, on the other side of the two-partite medieval structure of um, clergy and lay people. Um, ich musste durch den 
Itterwies, den Frauen Efen Apfelbies, hat leider bracht uns allen in diese Materie fallen. So he had to uh, really kind of uh, fall down this rabbit hole of um, all the sinfulness um, uh, and talk about uh, sins because of the dressing down that um, the bite into the apple by Eve has uh, uh, meant for all of humanity. Um, the uh, verb fallen takes up uh, the story has told about the pears falling, but also the story of the fall of mankind, the Sündenfall, as it's called in, in German, so strong verb. This um, transfer process is the bringen, is a weak verb, um, but it's a very old uh, uh, one of just a handful of very early weak verbs that have a different um, past ending because the um, loss of the nasal resulted in a compensatory lengthening of the vowel. So um, bringen, um, or in the Franconian dialect, zu bringen, um, has a short vowel and the past tense bracht um, has the A because it's not umlaut. Uh, the umlaut comes in in the uh, present tense through the high vowel ending bring yan. Um, and um, the past uh, tense then results in the lang, um, keeps the a and lengthen it to uh, because the nasal N of bringen has lost. So bringen brachte in Middle High German. The other um, weak verbs um, are also um, still extant in English, showing that they are early Germanic um, weak verbs. So denken dachte, also dachte in um, Middle High German is the equivalent of think, thought, um, wissen, um, wusste um, is a preterite presence, but uh, buy and bought um, doesn't any longer exist in uh, German. But bringen, brachte, denken, dachte, mögen. Mochte, suchen, uh, ja, und suchte. So, um, he had to fall into this matter. And, uh, as I said, it's a kind of play with the image of the Sündenfall. And he had, und musste von erste Urkünden, das Ursprung aller Sünden, das Seere noch uf uns erbet und lieb und Seele verderbet. So he had to uh, kundtun, urkunde, um, has become in uh, uh, later German the word for charter. Uh, it's uh, the uh, fixation in writing of uh, a certain knowledge and it's derived from um, kund, uh, kunde, the noun, so to know, know something, uh, but now you uh, transfer this knowledge into fixed um, matter in the form of an urkunde. And um, also Hugo plays with this um, prefix ur, uh, which in English has been replaced by a Latin derived uh, prefix. So arch, um, uh, so the uh, uh, urfeind is the arch enemy, 
for example. Um, so Ur has both means very early in origin, but also very strong. And um, but also in Ursprung, which is a noun derived from the strong verb springen. Um, in modern German, it is, it's der Ursprung, while in Middle High German, it's das Ursprung. And um, I particularly like uh, the visualization of this chain of transmission or really the fall down from grace, which is in one Renner manuscript, which is uh, very dear to me because I wrote my uh, doctorate on this particular manuscript, which was compiled by a uh, Nuremberg clerk, uh, somebody who knew something about Urkunden, uh, Johannes Forster in 1425. Um, and he illustrated each of the sins, uh, the deadly sins that Hugo von Trimberg is discussing uh, with a title um, image. And here the title image for the uh, first sin, Hoffart, pride. Uh, Hoffart is, is derived from uh, the adjective hoch and fahren, so uh, to ride high, uh, to be in, a, in very high spirits. And it's hoher um, murt is a positive uh, courtly virtue, but Hochmut or Hoffart, uh, so uh, the ch is um, in the amalgamation with a Fart um, uh, turned into an F, a uh, Hoffart is a sin. So it's a, a fine line between virtue and sin. And you can see um, on the upper register, um, two thrones. On the left-hand side, Christ is sitting uh, with a crossed um, halo on his throne um, before a blue sky. We discussed the word Himmel, both means sky and heaven, so he sits in heaven. Uh, while on the right-hand side, uh, Lucifer is falling down into a hell mouth. Uh, with nice hell's teeth, um, uh, grasping, pulling out his hair with one hand and turning black into in the process. You can see here the uh, the black blackened face and uh, black arm sorged by the fire of hell, uh, also, um, yeah, black hair. And um, the fire runs down from the hell's mouth through the hell's ear um, onto the heads of Adam and Eve, like a, a conversed um, Pentecost image, so it's not divine fire that is shining on their heads, but hellish fire, and uh, the angel is driving them out of paradise. Um, and it's uh, this form von, of heritage that Hugo van Trimberg is dis discussing here. Um, a typical modern weak verb at the period of Hugo von Trimberg's writing is the verb erben, so to inherit, uh, to, to leave as legacy to somebody. Um, in modern German, it's vererben, etwas jemandem vererben. So um, the legacy that um, we have inherited from Adam and Eve is uh, this sin that is uh, still spoiling both body and soul. And um, it's typical for 
weak verbs that um, if they aren't of this very early kind, like bringen, brachte, to bring, brought, that uh, they are different in the different Germanic uh, languages. So you don't have a direct equivalent of erben in the sense of to leave as legacy in, in English. Sieht diese wilde Welt hat so mannigerlei Missetat bracht in eine Gewohnheit von täglicher Emsigkeit, dass mannigen Lüten oft ist leid, ob man ihnen sagt die Wahrheit. In der Mitte sollen wir fahren und die Wahrheit doch nicht sparen und sollen den jungen Lüten dir birren, was bedüten, die von dem Baume sind gefallen. So we should steer a middle course between frightening people uh, so that they won't do anything further uh, and uh, no good will come out of it and um, between just leaving uh, the fingers off of telling. So uh, he'll take instead of directly explaining the Genesis story, he'll explain his kind of replacement Genesis story, which is the pear tree allegory. And so he'll beduten, again, this uh, word derived from Deutsch, um, the pears, in, uh, the, uh, which are fallen from the tree, Zecht, which is always a didactic uh, signal, the direct address to the reader, Secht dir geliechend sich uns allen, dir von dem Baume sind bekommen, als ihr davor habt vernommen. So, lo and behold, they are like us, uh, so they can be likened to us. That would be this, uh, an, an example for a weak verb that have been, has been analogously formed in English uh, to, to German. Vergleichen and to liken something. Um, so, um, du Heide bedütet diese Welt, die Gott gewiffelt und gebärt hat mit manniger Leie Wunne. So, uh, the Heather, he was talking about where the pears fall on, and um, he, re um, compares that to a tapestry um, that is uh, decorated by God. So Wiefeln and Berlin are two, again, very modern verbs at the time of Hugo von Trimberg's writing around 1300. Um, while to weave, weben would be a strong verb uh, meaning it's an activity that is done across the Indo-European uh, world. So just to produce basic clothing, um, the more refined uh, cloth making, so to put a little pearls on uh, the tapestry and to decorate it uh, with application work, um, is then newly formed, uh, taken from the uh, old strong verb weben, weave. And, uh, so I had to look up uh, this morning what actually uh, the words are in English for um, a loom. Uh, so in a loom, you have long wise. Um, the warp, the uh, Fäden lengthwise, and uh, warp comes from um, werfen, uh, werfen, warf, geworfen, um, which is extinct except for this uh, dry, uh, derived word in, in English. And um, weft is der Heftfaden in German what you weave across uh, the loom, and that is uh, derived from weben. So that is the bit that is woven across is the weft. And from then this word um, 
Weft, uh, or the equivalent in, in German, the Gewiefelt is derived. It's like a jacquard uh, pattern that you uh, decorate a tapestry with. And um, to uh, make clear how uh, Hugo von Trimberg comes up with this image, I've put up here the Epstorf world, not word map. <laughs> I'm too much in a uh, linguistics lecture. Um, it could also be de described as a word map because it has extensive captions for the parts of the uh, world. Um, it's made up of 30 goat skins and shows the world really like a decorated piece of tapestry. The world is uh, embraced by the hands of Christ, which you see on the uh, right and left hand side, uh, literally right and left hand. Um, you see his head at the top and the map is orientated. So um, the top end is east, the orient, that's where our word orientation comes from. The feet are uh, down at the west uh, side. Uh, so uh, England is located somewhere here at the edge of uh, the known uh, world. The center of it all is uh, Jerusalem, the golden, uh, shown as a square with 12 uh, uh, gates. You have the uh, earthly paradise right next to the head of Christ at uh, just on the physical world in the east. And from the uh, paradise come the four streams of paradise, which then spread across the whole world. So um, here the image of the Ursprung, das Entspringen, the spring of sin, coming down can be seen in the literal flow of the water from paradise across uh, the whole world. Uh, other features you can see here, um, it's a T-shaped map, so the Mediterranean Sea is lodged across here, and heart-shaped is Sicily, anatomically slightly dubious. Um, if you think of it as body of Christ, then the heart is about uh, where his left uh, hip should be, but um, that's the problem with um, uh, symbolic geography. Um, and I, I thought I would at this point uh, jump across the Renner and look at a specific passage on grammar, because it's fascinating to see that Hugo von Trimberg uses the same imagery of decorating a woven texture with colors for rhetoric that he uses uh, for God's creative act to decorate um, the world. And um, so he has a long section on uh, Frau Grammatica. And I've given you here the illustration from the Darmstadt manuscript of Der Renner, which was produced by Seyfried de Poich in 1472, where you see Grandma as a schoolmistress uh, teaching a boy uh, to read. And um, it's a very nice and soft image. Normally, Grandma has um, a router in one hand to, uh, to uh, castigate uh, the children and um, is not caressing uh, with one hand and pointing to the book uh, with the other hand. Um, this section on grammar comes um, 
fairly towards the end of um, the uh, passages on sin and comes at um, the discussion of the last sin, which is Lars height, um, so uh, or Treg height to be uh, lazy, I, which is a sin he ascribes uh, mainly to students. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, my one um, audience member today is the glorious exception to the rule of uh, students not wanting to get up early. So praise to him. Um, but uh, I picked also this passage partly because of its discussion of uh, grammar as a figure, but partly because it's rich in weak verbs. Uh, since it's this, um, again, intellectual uh, consideration by Hugo von Trimberg, which requires different vocabulary from that accessible in the Indo-European languages. And it's also all, uh, it's a Gedankenspiel, a thought experiment. Uh, so all the forms are in the irrealis, in the or conditional in uh, Middle High German. And he thinks if there was a merchant traveling across the countries offering this rich offering of colorful um, kram, um, wares, uh, haberdashery, um, and uh, why? Uh, uh, would anybody refuse to uh, rejoice in this offering? Um, but grandma is doing the same thing as a rich merchant in putting out her wares uh, colorfully, but uh, nobody wants to pick it up. So I want you to observe in the blue verb forms both um, the kind of refined vocab of the weak verbs and also the form of the conditional. Svelch Kramer führe in Ferryland, du große Gezierde ihm wäre bekannt und Svenne er Kost und Arbeit auf rielich Kram war tätige Leid, der er gebessern sich gedächte, Svenne er sie heim zu Lande brächte, Svenne er sie heim... Äh, ob sie einen Krame den Nirmen suchte und sie des Kaufschatzes Nirmen geruchte, der lustig und auch Nütze wäre, sollte das sie einem Herze nicht sehen zwere. Also ist mein Frau Grammatika unwert hier worden und anders war. Ihr Krame, was wielend viel genehme, der ist nur leider widerzähme. Alleine im Offensteh, die Tür, doch gehend die Schurler alle für. So, all pupils are passing by the door where Grandma has put up her kram, her rich wares, um, because they don't um, know what's good for them. And they uh, pass by und kehrend ihr Augen nierendet da, da man der Pfeller nimmt war, des Helfenbeines, der edeln Steine, schönes Gesmiede, groß und kleine, von Golde, von Sieden, Wehe, Borten, gewiefelt mit mannigen Wiesen, Worten, sich aber etz, wenn er ein Schurler drin, der suchet ein Trügementelin, in dem er schiene, zu aller Frist, viel künsteriecher, denn er ist. So the only reason uh, Hugo von Trimberg implies for any student to turn uh, into the school uh, office of Mrs. Grammar is to get a quick uh, rhetorical fix to uh, acquire a trüge mentalin, which is a nice neologism uh, compound word by Hugo von Trimberg. Mantel, uh, coat, mentalin, with a umlaut because of the um, e ending, 
the little code and trügen um, is uh, to deceive. So it's a, a cheat code is all what students nowadays are uh, wanting from uh, grammar. And they don't look at all the precious um, cloth and materials put out there. Um, the word Fella, which is put there, uh, means a precious silk um, cloth. And it's derived from the Latin word pallium. Uh, pallium uh, was uh, an imperial garment in uh, ancient Rome and is then picked up as ecclesiastical vestment by early Christianity and is uh, used as a sign of distinction for uh, certain bishops. So you have to be given the pallium by the Pope as a sign of distinction. So um, if you have a chance to uh, visit Bamberg, you'll see on every tombstone of the bishops there, remarkably uh, highlighted by the stonemason, the pallium, because they had it while the Würzburg bishops didn't get it. So um, they um, uh, put great um, uh, weight to uh, at this. And uh, the word pallium um, is an early import into German. And you can tell that it's an early loan word because it was borrowed before the second consonant shift had happened. So the second consonant shift turns the plosives at the beginning of a word into um, the affricates. It's something that English doesn't do. It's only High German that uh, does it. So at the start of the old High German period, um, words like pepper become pfeffer and uh, the word pallium being loaned before that uh, is included in the sound shift, so the P becomes P. And the A of palium is um, umlauted through because of the I ending. So it's a primär umlaut, the E, and you uh, could spell it actually in modern German as an A with dots if the word were still extant. But then the unstressed ending is um, shrunken, weakened to the schwa E. So you come from pallium via fallium, fellium to fella. Um, so uh, loan words for the uh, precious uh, commodities that aren't extant in the Indo-European uh, stock of words. Same, obviously, for Elfenbein, um, although this isn't a loan word, but a new compound word. Bein is an old Indo-European uh, root that exists in English in the word bone. So Elfenbein literally means uh, the bone of um, an elephant. So ivory. And English, again, tend to use for luxury items French loanwords, while German rather does this compound um, form. Uh, Siede, Seide, Silk, again, German um, has a Germanic word, while, uh, which was used for any precious object before it's then specific for silk, while English uh, takes in um, 
a French loan word. Borte is uh, the, the border of uh, close or the finishing uh, trimmings of uh, a dress. So, um, and you quite often have uh, this uh, trimming of uh, precious clothing uh, with a uh, silk or, or and then a vehe means um, outfall of um, precious again. So uh, precious or outfall trimmings made out of silk. And then we have uh, the word again, which I pointed out how God made the world. So uh, grammar decorates a uh, language with mit wiesen worten, with wise words. Uh, so I, I've given the definition from the uh, Benike Müller Zahnke here for Wiefeln, which actually uh, point to Hugo von Trimberg and uh, say it it had come in uh, uh, just uh, in the late 13th century as a Jan uh, verb, so with a uh, Jan ending. And I've uh, given you an image from the Swiss manuscript of Der Renner, which shows another image for how grammar works. It works like somebody playing a carillon of artfully uh, cast uh, little bells. And you see um, David um, as the singer of the Psalms uh, and uh, wordsmith, literally, hammering on the amboss producing these bells and then playing on the carillon with the same hammer. And round him are the uh, seven um, liberal arts um, as, decor uh, as illustration of this passage um, where you see here uh, on the right hand side uh, the passage on Elfenbein und schön geziert, groß und klein. Um, so you have Grammatica written there, um, Geometria, Musica, uh, Arithmetica, Logica, Astronomia, Rhetorica, meaning rhetoric. And um, I thought I would show you a bit more of how uh, grammar is really conceived as the foundation of everything in um, medieval uh, society, uh, showing that the paper four lectures are actually the cornerstone of studying uh, German. In, in Oxford, because without grammar, none of the other arts can work. So in this uh, Tübinger Hausbuch, a handbook of medical and mathematical uh, knowledge, um, which um, we used in the Deutsche Seminar in, in Tübingen as illustration for our first website in the 1990s, you see, um, the seven liberal arts aligned to uh, the seven um, gods that also work as planets. And ruling everything is uh, the sun, um, which is uh, has the scepter and the orb, um, or the rays of the sun as crown, and um, while the moon on the right hand side here is rhetoric, and that uh, brings in a kind of dynamic image 
the relationship between uh, forming nice words and the grammatical foundation of uh, everything. Um, and so in medieval schools, uh, you've started with a trivium of the three basic um, art forms, grammar, logic, and rhetoric. Um, logic is here aligned to Jupiter as the kind of um, king discipline of uh, ordering everything, also really aligned to grammar because lemma requires logical thinking and putting the uh, all the words in the right order. And only once you have mastered uh, the trivial things, that's where the word trivial comes from, the trivium, the three parts of the seven, you can uh, progress to the four other, the quadrivium, um, arithmetic, uh, geometry, music, and astronomy. But all these art forms are also governed by their grammar. Uh, so you can't just play wild music, spontaneously inspired. You have to do it according to the numbers and structures that grammar uh, provides for you. And um, in the Tübinger Hausbuch, these seven liberal arts and the seven planets are also aligned to other seven um, elements. Uh, which link up to another area of loan words because uh, the planets are also those uh, that rule over the days of the week. Um, so, um, and they are ruling uh, different forms of metal. In English, uh, you even have uh, the word, uh, the, the name of the god still as the metal in Mercury, uh, while in German Mercury is Quecksilber, which you see here written under Mercury, whom you can recognize by his wings because he is the messenger of the god, so he flies uh, through the skies and is likened to Quecksilber. Uh, Quek um, in medieval English and in medieval German means alive. Uh, and then it in English develops into quick. Uh, in modern German, you still have etwas erquickt mich, macht mich lebendig, um, revives me. Uh, so the different um, uh, metals are aligned to the um, properties of um, the gods. And um, this uh, points us to a um, particularly interesting way of uh, loan words, namely the replacement process for uh, names and a comparative uh, uh, look at how things are treated. So, um, solis dies in Latin uh, becomes uh, sun di, so the day of uh, the sun, which is a lone translation of each of the part of the words, same sonntag, um, because there the image of the pagan god wasn't too strong, it could just be linked to the uh, uh, planet uh, without it being very clear. So the same applies to Lune, Dies, Montag, Monday. So Monday going back actually to uh, Moon. In um, other days, um, it was uh, replaced. So Mercurii dies, uh, the day of Mercury, uh, 
is uh, replaced in Old High German by a kind of technical description. It's the middle of the week, if you count from uh, Sunday and end with Sunday again. Uh, so, and that's a process that starts in ecclesiastical Latin, which didn't want to have um, a clearly pagan god to um, remain in the uh, week. So they replace it with media heptomas and then mitwoch. Uh, while in English, um, the Roman god is replaced by a Germanic god. So Mercury is uh, aligned with Wodan. And so uh, Wodan's day becomes Wednesday. Um, the same replacement process happens with uh, Jove, Jupiter, who becomes Tor, and then Thursday, Donnerstag, Donal. Uh, it happens with Venus, who is replaced by Freya, becoming Freitag. And it happens with uh, Martis Dies, uh, and that it's um, replaced by Thingsus, uh, which is a, a German, Germanic name for Mars. Here ends today's uh, lesson. I'll uh, stop the recording in a moment just to alert you to the fact that next week there won't be a lecture um, online here in um, for uh, Middle High German, but rather there is on Thursday and Friday the colloquium on uh, Old High German, which takes place in the Western Library and online, which will have um, several lectures actually on loan words from Latin. So I, I thought I would do a bit of a preview for that.